Hello everyone, this is a tutorial for the Nano Banana Generative Fill plugin for Photoshop. So when you first install the plugin, it'll show up in your plugins menu, in your plugins panel, and once you run it for the first time, it'll also show up in your plugins toolbar right here. So this is the screen you'll first get when you open the plugin, and you need to enter your Gemini API key. And you can get this key at aistudio.google.com. I already have that open right here. Uh, when you go to this link, uh, first I'll uh, prompt you to consent. You don't have to check this. And you just click I accept. And then you click get API key. Create an API key. And then you can copy this key right here. Go back to Photoshop and paste your key, save it, and now you'll get this panel. You're ready to work. So you are now on the free tier, which actually offers pretty generous uh, image generation limits and are gonna be plenty for you, especially that you're gonna be mainly using it for the cases where a generative fill fails. But if you do need more, you can go back to Google AI Studio uh, press set up billing and just by doing that just by connecting a payment method to your account you get a free trial with three hundred dollars in free credit for 90 days and these are my usage limits these are my actual usage limits for the past two days so uh, i've used 78 generate 78 images one day 35 images the next day and then 71 images the following day which amounts to 184 generations in three days. And this is my billing usage. And all I've used up is like about $7. So this is really a very sweet deal. Now let's go back to Photoshop. And right here I have this image, which was also generated by Gemini. And let me walk you through the different use case scenarios for this plugin. So the first use case scenario is image editing, which is the one you'll likely most be using. So you first make a selection and type your prompt. Let's type something like make her face facing the camera and smiling. And you want to keep this box che checked because uh, it basically instructs uh, Nano Banana to keep the image borders unchanged so it would fit back into the original image. And um, we'll talk about this one later. You have the choice between sampling all visible layers or just the selected layer only. We only have one layer, so it doesn't really matter, but you'd usually want to keep this selected unless you want otherwise. Uh, the output options, you have an option between inserting the result as a new layer or just replacing the original layer. You'd usually want to use this because it gives you more control and is non-destructive. And you have to make sure to unlock the background layer so it can get the pixels. And now you can press generate and you wait for a few moments. And you can see Nano Banana does a pretty good job, but even though we have this box change, it sometimes still has these unmatching borders like this, which is why I have this little, little helper function called feather edges. You can set the feathering amount as feather edges, and it will feather the layer to help the edges better blend in. And you can always change the feathering amount. You can make it bigger, or you can make it smaller. Or you can remove it entirely and it will still work. Set it back. Okay. This looks pretty good. Okay, so let's move on to the next use case scenario, which is selecting the reference image. So I'm going to select this whole part of the image. And I'm going to go to select image, which is the PNG, select the suit image. And I'm going to say, Make her wear this suit. 
and I'll press generate. Make sure I have simple all layers visible and wait a few moments. And there you go. Perfect result on the first try. You can try a couple more examples. For example, I can select um, this mug here, maybe. I'll just remove this reference image. You don't need it anymore. And I'll say replace this mug with uh, Apple. Oops. And let's press generate. And again, a perfect result. And you can notice that even though I had a typo here, it still understands what you want to do. So it's it's really powerful. I know. Okay, uh, one final mode left, which is the generation. So for generation, you can just select an area of empty pixels. So if I like select a layer here, let me hide these. And now it won't matter if I have either of these selected because I hid the other one, but let's just go with selected layer only. And if I select an area on the canvas, and now there's nothing selected, and I just I can just enter a prompt to generate. So, for example, I can say um, a street, for example. And when there is nothing in the selected area, then this this box is is ignored. So you don't need to uncheck it. And let's just press generate. And uh, when you do this. Nano Banana will try to match the dimensions or aspect ratio of your selection. And there you go. Okay, now let's move on to a really interesting use case, use case scenario, which is outpainting or image expansion. Let's add a new layer, move it down here, select everything, and fill it, and fill it with white. And then we can select around the image like this and let's uncheck this and say complete this image and i, I found it helpful to say don't magnify because it sometimes will just magnify the original image now let's press generate And there you go. It fills around the image, expanding it. This is this is really cool. So before I wrap up, uh, you can sometimes get some errors when the um, API is overloaded, when they're getting too much request volumes. So sometimes when you try to generate, you'll get an uh, internal API error, aborted error, aborted by user error. And most of what you have to do is just hit generate again. But sometimes when they're really overloaded, you'll keep getting the error, in which case you have to wait a minute. So uh, I hope you like uh, the Nano Banana Generative Fill plugin. Happy creating.